What is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to add 3D objects to your videos inside of After Effects. Now before I get started with this video you will need to be on one of the later versions of After Effects. I believe importing 3D objects into After Effects is a pretty new update so make sure you're updated to the latest version but we can go ahead and import pretty much any type of 3D object we want but for this video I'm going to be using this jet right here and this is just available on Sketchfab. There's a few other good websites you can look for 3D objects on but I really like Sketchfab. I'll have this same model link down in the description below so you can go ahead and download this. Now I'm not sure what all files are compatible with After Effects at the moment so when you go ahead and download your file you want to make sure that you download a .glb file because I'm not sure if these other files are compatible with After Effects at the moment and I just know that this one seems to work for me so let's go ahead and hit download on the glb file and you should get a file that you can go ahead and import into After Effects. Now I already have my file imported into After Effects here but when you drag it into your project it might ask you to scale it up or down so just go ahead and scale it down so you can actually see the object and once it's imported into your timeline it should look something like this but we're going to go ahead and hide this 3d object for now and on our footage here we're just going to go into the tracker and hit track camera so my tracking just got done but as you can see it failed so if that happens you might have to go ahead and change the shot type to variable zoom and that usually kind of fixes that problem and there we go now we can see we have our points here but what you need to do is create a camera so go into the 3d camera tracker and hit create camera so now that we have a camera you can see our object is now tracked to the footage here now if you track your footage and the plane looks something like this then that's because you need to move the plane back in your footage here so using the z-axis we can just scale this up or down but yeah just bring that back to your footage so i'm going to do like 30,000 or something to see if that works so now it's further back in our footage here and we can move it around using the X and Y position here. So now let's go ahead and animate this jet. So I'm going to set a keyframe so it starts off the frame here. So for the position, we're just going to set a keyframe here. Now let's go to the very end of our timeline and then move this plane so it goes to the other side of our footage here. And then I want the plane to kind of come towards us on the footage here. So I'm going to bring this value, the Z distance back down to like 5000. And then now you can see it's way off the screen here. So we just need to move it back into our footage so now you can see it's a lot bigger and we're just going to set the end keyframe so it's kind of above the frame here now we can mess with this line here so it's not just a linear line you can drag these points here and kind of make it a little bit of a curve like this now obviously a plane doesn't just fly straight like this and doesn't turn at all so what we're going to do is open up the rotation so hitting r brings up the orientation here and it looks good at the start so let's just hit a keyframe for the orientation here and then go to the end of our keyframes and then you want to move the jet around so it kind of aligns with our position here and now after we rotate it around you can see it doesn't actually fully go off the screen so let's just go back into the position here and on the end keyframe, just move it up a little bit so it's out of the frame. And now you can see we already pretty much have the animation done. Um, what you can also do is go into the X rotation, set a keyframe at the start here, and then go to the end and kind of rotate it like this so it moves like on the side, I guess, because I think that's what they do, but <laughs> I don't fly jets, so I don't really know exactly how it would actually be moving right here. So I think something like that looks pretty realistic. So now that we're done with the animation, we can go ahead and pre-compose our 3D object. And let's just go ahead and select this one and then hit the adjust composition setting right here. And the reason why we do that is because we need to apply a few more effects onto here. And for some reason, you can't apply any effects to the original 3D object, so you have to pre-compose it. But once it's pre-composed, we can go into the effects and presets and we're gonna apply tone onto our 3d object here and basically we're just going to try to match this jet more to the background of the footage here so i'm going to change the highlights here to kind of the brighter blue area of our footage and then the mid-tones i'm going to select kind of the mid-tones of the sky here and then for the shadows i'm going to pick kind of that orange color but that's way too bright so i'm going to kind of bring it down like this now we can adjust the slider here to kind of blend it together i think 70 percent looks pretty clean so now you can see the before and after it's pretty subtle but kind of just blends in with the sky a little bit more you can also apply brightness and contrast maybe brighten it up a little bit and then i'm also going to add some contrast because this footage is pretty contrasty so i think that just makes it pop a little bit more lastly i'm going to add force motion blur just so we actually have some motion blur on this jet here and i'm going to keep the shutter angle at 180. now obviously in real life this jet would probably be going a lot faster but for this video i'm just kind of exaggerating it and Kind of making it slower so you can actually see the whole entire animation so it's not like a second long but it's already looking super good but lastly i'm going to go ahead and add like a reflection on the windshield here you can also add like shadows to your footage but there's already like a huge shadow going across the ground here so that would kind of look a little off so i'm just going to go ahead and add a 
reflection to the windshield here. Now it's pretty simple to do. You just want to select your original footage with the car here and let's go ahead and create a mask around the windshield. So just using the pen tool, you just want to create kind of an outline around the windshield here. And then I'm going to go into the mask by hitting M and bring this to none and then right click the mask and hit track mask. And let's just go ahead and analyze this forward. Now let's just go ahead and duplicate our mask. So let's hit control D and on the bottom, we can just delete this mask because we won't be using it. Now on this one, let's go back to the mask and bring it to subtract. And we can also feather the mask out a bit. So let's bring it to like 10%. Now for the jet here, let's go ahead and duplicate that as well. Hitting control D. I'll rename it to like reflection and let's right click the layer and then click transform and flip vertical. Now I'm just going to scale it up to like 110% and then move it over to that windshield right there. And then you just want to make sure that the reflection is underneath that mask that we just created. Now, as you can see, you get a reflection through the windshield here. Let's go ahead and add some Gaussian blur to this. And let's change this to like 20% here. And also in the opacity, let's bring this down to like 60, maybe even less like 50. And then if you want, you can also match the colors to this windshield here using that tritone that we had earlier, just by kind of adjusting the highlights, um, the midtones, and also the shadows, just so the color kind of matches with the windshield here. So now we get a pretty subtle reflection in the windshield. And there we go. That's pretty much how you create this effect. And once again, like I said in the intro, this doesn't have to be just like the jet. You can use pretty much any type of object you want, which is super cool. But hopefully you guys found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.